Hello, everybody. I am Ashley Fields with The Editor Us. Today is Friday. I think it's, oh, let's see, March 19th. And we are going to be working on our baseball gnomes that are behind me. Uh, these blanks can be found at yardarrest.com. If you are local to our store, we have a store in Pearland, Texas, which is just south of Houston, Texas. And so you're, uh, all the locals, obviously, you can just come on into our store. If you are not local, we do, uh, we do have uh, shipping available. So as you hop in, say hello. Y'all, this is my first time, share two group, uh, going live on, there we go. This is my first time going live on this page. So I am trying to get this shared everywhere that I need to share it. Okay, let me see. Do, 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 do. Okay. I think I got it shared into all of our groups, so hopefully everybody uh, can find me. I know uh, today is the first day we are going live here, so I don't expect to have as many people here today. Uh, but hopefully, 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 uh, those that are in the Yard Art Painters Club and, and Yard Art Academy are getting um, notified that um, we have a live video going on right now. So, hello, hello. Okay, y'all, it has been, it's been a crazy week here. Um, as you hop in, say hello. For whatever reason, I'm usually used to being able to see, it'll like tell me when people are popping in, but I'm not getting that notification right now. So, uh, but this week has been crazy, you guys. Uh, let's see, Monday, my uh, our power went out while I was running my machine and uh, it crashed my machine. And so, man, that's, that's a whole different ball game, you know, when your, uh, your systems are going down and, and, you know, I don't know how to fix that kind of stuff. So it's been a rough one. But luckily, we were very, very lucky that our CNC guru, who is the guy who set up our CNC, he taught us how to use our CNC, all of that, uh, he happened to be in Houston, or not in Houston, in Texas uh, this week. He was just outside of Austin. And so he actually drove over here last night at 9.30 and got our machine back up and running. So we're super excited. We have a lot of new blanks coming out um, in April. And so I'm actually getting a lot of those things cut right now. So exciting, y'all. Okay, so we obviously have uh, three different gnomes. We have... The play ball, uh, you know what, let me turn this around. I should have turned this around to begin with. Boop. Let me turn this around so you guys can actually read the play ball. There we go, okay. So uh, you have the play ball, uh, you have the baseball bat, and then you have the base ball. Y'all, I'm using the same colors on all of these. So obviously I did the play ball, it's finished already. I'm not gonna be doing that one on our live today. We are gonna be doing the baseball bat from start to finish because it is the only piece that has a different color um, than the other pieces. And so you see this one with the ball, I have everything done except the base ball because I did wanna do that together. So we're gonna do our ball together and then we're gonna work on the gnome with the bat behind me. So let's go ahead and get started. I just Windexed my piece and that is because um, it's been sitting around. I actually painted these maybe a week ago or so. And so it's been sitting around and collecting a lot of dust and that dust on top of that piece can make your paint separate. Hey Carla, hey Dawn, I'm so glad y'all could find me today. Yay, hey Debbie, thank y'all so much for coming and hanging out. I know this is new. I know this is different than what we've normally uh, been doing as far as how we go live. Uh, I am gonna try to explain that. I'm hoping we can get a few more people in here before I start to try to explain that. Um, but those of you that just hopped on, we have three different baseball gnomes. I'm using all the same colors. It's gonna be the same techniques. So the play ball one behind me is finished. Uh, we are going to do the baseball bat gnome from start to finish. And this one with the ball, I just wanted to do the actual baseball together. 
But other than that, as soon as I would get done with this base ball, we're gonna move on to the one with the back behind me. All right, y'all, so I'm just grabbing my script liner. I think this is number four. This I must have left this in the water a long time because this uh, handle is really swollen. So I'm just taking that script liner and simply following that line. Okay. Now, on this line that I just did, it is etched into my pattern, okay? What is not etched into my pattern is the kind of little stitches. And that is why I wanted to show you guys the ball on this one. Because anybody who wants to paint this, I wanted you to know how you can do your baseball. So this is a Royal Gold Script Liner. It is a number four. I prefer number four. It is uh, just the right length and width for me. Everybody has different, um, you know, different brushes that they really care for. This is just what I like. So, hi Pam, how are you doing babe? So glad you could find me. Ah, uh, y'all. When I first signed on, I had one viewer, so I was like, uh, I'm hoping people find me. Uh, so, all right, y'all, we got that baseball going, right? I have these two red lines etched. So now I'm just kind of adding in my stitching. It's like an up, upside down letter V, guys, that's it. Uh, Ashley, talk about the calendar and going live impromptu, I sure will. Uh, all right, so at this point, y'all, all I'm doing with this paintbrush, I'm just kind of spacing these out about the same width and just doing upside down Vs. That's it. Um, so I wanted to explain several things to you guys because I know uh, we are obviously going live on a new page. The page is still run by the same people. It's still run by myself and by Mary. Uh, the difference between a page and a group is that Facebook does not uh, push us out or allow us to like promote a group. They allow us to do that on a page, but do not allow that in a group setting or a group format. And so uh, for us, in order to be able to like grow our business, it just made sense to have a page that we go live from. So this is gonna be the new platform uh, where you guys can find us and have all the latest up-to-date information. We still have our group on Facebook, Yard of Rust Painters Club, and that group is gonna remain the same with the exception that we go live here as opposed to over there. Again, that's just for business purposes for ourselves uh, to help us grow our business because we cannot market a group. It's pretty much as simple as that. So I hope that everybody you know, was able to find us pretty easily. Make sure you like this page and make sure you follow it and maybe sign up for the notifications of when we do go live. That way you don't miss anything. On our end, we will uh, make sure that we're sharing those posts inside of the Painters Club. But the Painters Club is just a great place for people uh, to you know, post uh, what they're working on, to ask questions, to, you know, kind of have that community with other like-minded individuals. So now, uh, as far as that is one change, y'all, we're going to be making a lot of changes and we're going to start small. Okay. Let me explain to you guys why we're going to be doing some things differently. We had a, uh, my mom and I, so Mary, uh, and I had a, a Zoom call with our uh, business coach this week, and she really helped to explain some things to us on basically what we could be doing better with. And so the conversation was really good, y'all. We learned a lot, but it does mean we have to kind of revamp and change the way that we've been doing some things. So one of those changes obviously is this page. And then another change is that we are no longer going to have a, uh, a calendar that's getting put out every month in the Painters Club. Uh, what we are going to do is still have our sneak peek, which we have one on April 5th. It's the first Monday in April. And you guys will get to see all of the April patterns. Uh, we will still do all of those patterns that we show you for that month during that month. 
we just aren't going to be tied to a schedule in the Painters Club, Yard Art Arrest Painters Club. Yard Art Arrest Academy, the paid membership, will receive a calendar uh, with the videos that we are doing in the Academy. It's the Painters Club will not receive a calendar. And that is honestly just because we are running a retail storefront. We are now running two Facebook pages, two Facebook groups, and our business has so many different facets of it, as well as I still paint yard art to sell, and so does Mary. And so for us, being tied to a schedule has just been very, very difficult to do with all of the other irons in the fire that we have. So from starting in April, I know you guys are used to knowing a specific day and a specific time of when we're gonna go live, we're gonna do it more impromptu. We'll let you know that day, you know, that we're gonna go live and what time we're gonna go live, uh, but it's not gonna be, you know, scheduled out like it has been so far. Uh, let's see, Mary says, Academy will receive a calendar every month. Yes, so Academy will, the Yard Arrest Academy will get their calendar with the Zoom call and the uh, two lives that they are going to have every month. That way you guys know what's going on in that group. It's the Painters Club that will not uh, have a calendar. All right, I'm gonna keep on talking, obviously, but I wanted to just let you guys know. This guy is done, okay? All I did was I used red number 20 in my script liner to do my stitching and then just a little bit of black to outline my ball. Um, obviously, these colors are gonna be the same on every piece, so I will talk about them as I'm working on our next piece. Let me just move that over. I obviously don't wanna stand that up right now because it's still really wet. So, now, the baseball bat gnome. This is the one we're gonna do from start to finish. First things first, y'all, I've got a Windex it because it's been sitting around for like a week and it's gonna have so much dust on it. So, hi Carla, hi Jennifer, how are you doing? Um, I hope y'all are, I'm so glad y'all can find me, y'all. I didn't know as far as like uh, views, how many views I might get because I did post about it, but I, uh, you know, I understand when things are new and things are changing, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to keep up with. So thank y'all for coming and hanging out. Um, I also did share this into the group, so I hope that those of you who haven't liked the page, if you are watching this video, make sure you like this new page, Yard Art Us, Painters in the Making. All right, uh, before I get started, I just wanted to let you guys know, I started with two coats of white. Every single gnome, every single baseball gnome is the same. Two coats of white. Uh, obviously, I have flesh on my nose and my uh, hands. My baseball bat is done in reindeer brown. And then I'm doing Astros colors because we're in the Houston area, so Astros are our baseball team. I use Asterisk Orange and Brilliant Blue. You don't have to use these colors. You're not in the Houston area. You know, your, your team isn't the Astros, obviously. You switch it out and use whatever colors you want to use. But every piece that I, I have for all three baseball gnomes have the same exact colors on them. So first thing I'm going to do is let's get a little bit of dry brushing on our bat. Y'all know, y'all know, I love me some dry brushing. I'm gonna get a plate, and let me also pull that cart over. Get this thing close and ready. Okay, gotta get a little bit of shading brown. Y'all, please, if y'all have any questions, or maybe are, are not fully understanding our change or want to know more about it, please, please, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. I'm happy to explain things as best I can. I hope the explanation that I've given you guys makes, makes some sort of sense. Uh, it's, you know, for us, it's just, I think it's gonna also be a lot easier for us to uh, organize things coming off of a page as opposed to a group. So we're excited about the change, but nonetheless, y'all, it's a change. It's new and it's different. All right, I got a two ounce chip brush. I know I have a little bit too much paint, so I'm kind of like trying to wipe some of that off on my table. Whoopsie. All right. So I'm just gonna take that. I, I kind of loaded it and offloaded it, right? Because when you're dry brushing, you don't want it to be thick and heavy. You want it to be light. Um, if you guys are gonna do this pattern, I also suggest that you dry brush this before you paint like your flesh and everything because it is really easy to kind of mess up your other parts on here, all right? And then now on my handle, I really wish I didn't have a two inch because it's almost too big. I'm almost pinch it in in the center. I just kind of do like a little, a U shape, if you will. What 
are you doing? My brush is a little too wide. I'll just wipe that off. Okay. So let me put this one in the water. I'm going to give that, actually, I'll just hit it with the blow dryer for like 10 seconds. Um, we're going to come back over top of it and do camel because you know when I dry brush, I use a shade darker and a shade lighter. Uh, are you selling the templates for those? Jennifer, quick head question. I'm trying to remember. I don't think we are. I want to say, Jennifer, that I got these templates off of um, off of Etsy. Now, I do know the baseball bat one. I made that template, or I really changed it and made the baseball bat to put on here and change the hands and everything. But the actual just regular part of the template, it came just like this but it was blank right here. It might have said welcome or something, and it didn't have stripes. I added the stripes, I changed the wording. I did all of that in my designing software. Uh, but the actual like outside shape of the gnome and with you know just the uh, hat, the face, and the shoes and pants, that came from Etsy. A lot of times, y'all, I'll get patterns from Etsy, but I have to totally transform them and redo them. Uh, but obviously if it's not mine, I didn't do it from the start, I can't give that to anybody because, you know, that's, that's just not how it goes. It's copywriting. But great question, Jennifer. Thank you for that. Y'all, what is everybody doing today? Uh, I have, I spent hour, a couple hours on the phone with Mary this morning uh, trying to kind of figure out how the best way to like explain all of this to you guys and, and the best way of going about all of this. And um, while doing that, I'm like trying to build files and trying to do emails and all sorts of stuff. So I feel like I'm like running around like a chicken with my head cut off, like my mind, you know, that uh, mind blown emoji where your head's like popped open and all the bubbles coming out. That's kind of how I feel today. Just a lot going on. Y'all, I'm just taking a little camel. I just grabbed a smaller chip brush because I just didn't want to make a big of a mess. I have a little bit too much paint in there. So I'm actually wiping it right back off. Let me take some more of that paint out of my brush, offload some more, and then come back in. Okay, a little better. And then I just kind of really come over top. Your camel is a shade lighter than your uh, reindeer brown, which is your base. And so y'all know me, you gotta have a darker and a lighter tone. So that darker tone coming up is shading brown, and the lighter tone coming up is camel. Ah, Pam says she started planting vegetables. How fun. Pam, I always try to tell myself, I'm going to start gardening. I want to plant fruit trees and stuff like that. And guess what? I never do. I run out of time. <laughs> I'm somebody who's just so busy. So, so busy. And, I, you know, it sounds good to want to take on a new hobby, but I never seem to have the time to actually take on a new hobby. Carla says, spring cleaning. Yes, y'all. I, um... Uh, I went last weekend to Walmart. I told my husband, I said, we are going to go, what, well, going to go get a steam cleaner. So we went to Walmart and I think we got like the Bissell Pet Pro Heat Wave something or other. It was like 200 and, I don't know, almost $300. Uh, but I got home and uh, the next day I steam cleaned our carpets because I have a dog that will not stop pottying in my bedroom at night. And so, uh, steam clean the carpets, wow, night and day difference. It was awesome, super, super awesome. And so then after that, I was like, got in a cleaning mood and I went through my daughter's room and cleaned it out. Cause I don't know if anybody has like a, a little kid or a 10, my, my daughter's 11. Uh, but she, you know, you open her drawers and there's like broken crayons and markers that are dried out with just random junk in everywhere. So we went through her room. I think we spent four hours total and we took every drawer in her room and dumped it out on the bed and sorted stuff and threw stuff away. So we've been doing a little bit of spring cleaning here ourselves. Uh, so let's see, Pam says, uh, painting wise, I've been working on Gnome Sweet Gnome. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Pam, make sure you post some photos. Jennifer says, getting ready for my paint party this Sunday. Oh my gosh, how exciting. That is so awesome, Jennifer. I can't wait to hear an update on how that goes. All right, y'all, I'm just getting my brushes ready and my paint ready. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little shading on my beard. I'm going to use the number 16, but I might want to end up switching to like a 14 or a 12. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, the spring cleaning, y'all, I've been having to do that over here. I've also been 
getting patterns ready for Christmas. Um, as y'all know, I obviously paint yard art and sell yard art. That is um, kind of the bread and butter for me. Uh, so I have to start working early. So we've already been cutting Christmas yard art. I've got Christmas yard art all over my tables right now I've been working on. Just getting really excited. I love, love, love Christmas. And anybody who has, I guess, followed us for a little bit, y'all might know too. Anybody want to take a guess if my Christmas tree is still up in my house? Because it is. <laughs> I am a, I've always been such a Christmas lover and I just don't, I'm somebody who will literally have my tree up for like six months out of the year and then I'll decide to take it down, which I did tell my husband, I think like last week, I was like, maybe it's time to come down. He's like, yeah, I think, I think it might be. <laughs> so I might need to do that here good and soon. So, ah, uh, that's awesome. How are you going to paint? Okay. So Mary was just talking. All right, y'all on that beard. I just used a little bit of beard blue. I'm gonna turn it around because whenever I do these swishes, it makes it hard for me to do that upside down. All right, obviously your direction of your beard is coming out and down. So I kind of tried to do the same thing. I'm not adding any more paint to my brush. I'm just gonna use what I've already got in here. Let's see. A little Sometimes it's one of those things like you can keep looking at it and keep adding, but I, I like to not try to do too much. All right, so that's just beard blue so far. Let me wash out my brush and we'll just keep on moving on to the next color and the next color. So, y'all, uh, we have, by the way, uh, in case if y'all didn't know, we are going to start doing paint parties at our store, in-person paint parties. Uh, so those of you that are local to Pearland, Texas, uh, we will have those coming up. I know we have a, uh, it is a mom blank. It says mom and the O is a sunflower. And that's actually our first paint party. I think it's April 2nd. I think it's Friday night at 6 p.m. So anybody who is local and who would be interested in that, y'all check it out. We have that listed on our website at yardaddress.com. And there is a tab that says in-person paint parties and you can find more information there. So lots of new stuff happening guys. I, I, you know, I don't, we can't even keep up with it half the time because we have so much going on. All right. I am going to just kind of looking at it, trying to see, I think I'm going to do my peach. I'll do my flush, peach, flush, whatever. Same thing. Um, let me get this stirred. I have my shading flush here and get that stirred and I might need to, uh, might need to add just a touch of water. This one is my cap on these two ounce cups. Once you uncap them several times and use them several times, you'll notice the caps don't fit anymore because they get so much paint kind of build up. And so this one was kind of hanging off and it ended up drying out just a little bit. All right, I'm still sticking with that Royal Gold flat tip brush. It's a number 16. Um, I like the number 16. It's a little bit wider. Obviously, it's actually a lot wider than our other brushes that we use. Uh, but this one, this pattern in particular, you have a lot of really wide spaces. So I think the number 16 just goes, goes really well with this one. I am not liking... There we go. Oh, that was kind of giving me a little... Kind of coming out and poking out the side. I didn't quite care for that. So just doing a little bit of that shading flesh on here. I'm gonna do the same on my hands. If you are somebody who's using a big brush and you're like, man, I really need something a little smaller, but I don't have it, you can always turn your brush sideways and use the thinner side as opposed to the width of your brush. All right, just a little bit of that. Let me clean my brush back out and cap my paint, and we're just going to keep moving on. So we have, obviously, we still are going to need to shade our blue, our orange, and our bat. So, yeah, so Mary says, what are y'all going to paint, Jennifer? We're all so excited for you. We can't wait to hear about it. I love, love, love seeing everybody have um, their kind of like side hustles or, you know, side businesses 
that have to do with painting and paint parties and selling their, their uh, creations. I just find that to be so awesome. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get our orange. So my base orange is asterisk orange, so I'm gonna shade that with shading orange. When this shading orange first goes on, it does not look uh, dark at all, but it does dry darker. So when you first put it on, you almost can't see it. But it, it does, when it dries, it'll look a lot better. And just stir that up. Oh, also, those of you who are watching, I want to let you guys know as well, we have uh, gone through um, our Painters Club page, which was where we used to go live at all the time. And we've had to delete a lot of old videos, a lot of old content. So if you're ever looking for an old video of ours, um, everything is on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Yard or Us, make sure you follow us on YouTube as well. Uh, you can find every tutorial that we've done. So just want to let you guys know that just in case. All right, got a little bit of that shading orange on the pants. Again, I told you guys, I know y'all can't see this very well right now, uh, but it will dry a little bit darker. Now, I did not shade my polka dots um, on uh, the version that I, I painted to sell because they're just kind of small, but I do kind of want to just come in here and, and do a little bit of shading on them. I just think it'll help them to pop. Not doing much. Notice I'm still using that number 16, but I'm, I'm turning it on the side because I don't want this to be so wide that it takes up the entire uh, polka dot on here. So I'm just turn it on its side to thin out that line a little bit. Just bring a little bit of uh, depth to those polka dots. All right. I know that orange is hard to see, but once I blow dry it, it'll come out a little bit better. All right, so there's your orange. Again, asterisk orange was my base. Shading orange is my shading color. We'll wash that brush back out. Let me actually get a paper towel. Because, you know, I just keep wiping it onto my shirt, and that never dries my brush near as good as a paper towel will. I obviously still have a lot of color in that brush. I'm not really that worried about it. I think I got a little bit of water right there. I think I got a little bit there, too, y'all. making a mess. What else is new? I'm always making a mess. All right, uh, we still have our Brilliant Blue and our Bat left to do. Let me go ahead and get my Bat done, okay? So my Bat, I had Reindeer Brown as the base and then I, sh I dry brushed with Shading Brown and Camel. I'm now gonna use that Shading Brown again to do the shading on my Bat. Let me get a spoon and stir this, y'all, because y'all know if I'm using a two ounce cup, that is because I have water added to it. I just add a little bit of water whenever I'm shading and I'm outlining to help my strokes be longer and more fluid. When you're trying to shade and you're trying to outline, if you're seeing that your stroke is you know, very short and, and maybe even choppy, add a little bit of water, it'll be really helpful. Again, loading that corner and just following along with my lines and the perimeter of my piece. You see that? Okay. All right, so there's that. Now here in between the hands, it's not really wide enough to do anything. I Notice I didn't even get dry brushing there because it's such a tiny little spot, but I do just take a little bit of shading and make sure I get that on that spot in between their hands. Okay, so there's your bat. All right, let's get the blue shaded and then we can start outlining. Let me clean that out and where is my cap? Oh, I'm over here going, where are you? It's hiding. Okay, I am, you know what, I'm just going to get a different brush because this is my last shading color. 
Rachel. This one is like a number 12 uh, flat tip brush. And I, this, I use Brilliant Blue as my uh, blue base. So I'm going to use Navy Blue for my shading. I want to say, y'all, that we released these gnomes last year about this time, but I did not do a live on the gnomes. And so um, if you guys have seen these been released before, that, that they did, they were, uh, but I don't believe I ever did a live on them. So, all right, got a little bit of navy blue. I've got a little bit of water added into it. And again, I'm loading that brush on the corner and I'm really just following those lines. I've got a little bit of uh, shading flush in that brush. Clean that back out. Y'all, my piece is, is wet. All this, everywhere that I've shaded is still wet. So sometimes it'll end up coming up in my brush. No big deal. I just wash it right back out or wipe it right back out. And then I'm just going to continue to follow it along. And then just a little bit right here. Okay. Let me just show y'all close what it's looking like so far. Let me flip it around and just do my shoes. And just a little bit of perimeter shading. I'm just going to come in here and give me give it a little swipe. I accidentally pulled up a little bit of that beard blue in here, but I'm not worried about it. No big deal. All right, I'm going to cap that. My shading is done. I just need to outline and highlight, but before I do that, it needs to be dry, so I'm going to have to blow dry it for just a few and get it ready for me to start outlining it. We've got, um, so we have our first paint party in person starting next month. Uh, we are going to add, obviously, some more paint party classes. Right now we only have one up, and then we have one for our academy members on April 10th. Um, but I'm curious if anybody you know, that's interested in paint parties, what are some projects that you guys would like to see or like, us, like to do in person, you know, with some support from myself and my mom Mary. Out of curiosity, we'd love to hear your feedback if there's something that you feel like, man, I would really love to be able to do that in person with them. What would that look like for you? Let us know because your feedback is what really helps us to uh, kind of plan out things and figure out what we're going to do next. So we love hearing back from y'all. I know the blow dryer is really annoying, but I have to do it if we're going to get to outline this, so sorry y'all. Bear with me a few more minutes. I just need it really just dry enough that whenever I am outlining, I'm not pulling up the color from underneath. Hi Mandy, how are you doing, babe? it's Friday it has been like a really long week around here and uh, Friday is we are welcoming with open arms y'all it has uh, been a hot mess but I did get my CNC back up and running and so uh, that's almost unheard of when it crashes and then you get it back up and running within four days so uh, you know that's that's nice uh, I even told Chris, our CNC guy that came last night, I was like, dude, I don't even know how this worked out. Like, he's from North Carolina, and he happened to be in Texas when my machine went down. So I really lucked out to get it fixed that fast. Um, Pam says, will you be letting us know what you will be painting in the Academy Paint Party? Pam, yes. 
In fact, uh, I'm not sure if Mary's still on here, but we do already have some of them cut. And so those of you that are local, wait for us to post in the Academy, uh, cause I, I, I need to double check with Mary. Uh, but those of you that are local can actually come pick up that piece. Once we post, you can come pick up that piece and get it base coated before our paint party. Uh, otherwise, if you are coming to the paint party, but you're not close by and you cannot pick up your piece before the party, I will base coat it for you. Uh, but if you guys want to base coat it yourselves, obviously you can have that luxury of choosing whatever colors you might want to choose. Uh, if I'm doing the base coating, I'm going to base coat them all the same way. Uh, but y'all know how painting is. Those of you that have been painting your art for some time, this paint is not craft paint. It does not dry quickly. You know, it takes some time. And so, uh-oh, no, I'm making a mess over here. And so if I don't get it base coated beforehand, then there's no way we'd be able to finish it during that class time. Sorry, y'all. I got a little bit of that uh, navy blue on my orange, which didn't want to do that. So Pam, we'll let you know. Let me speak with Mary. I know we had the blank that we were doing, we had like seven cut out, but I, we need a lot more than that before we start telling the Academy members that they can come pick stuff up. Uh, I just thought about this, y'all. I was about to do black, but what makes more sense to me is doing my, uh, my nose, my bat, and my hands so that I'm not pulling wet paint from the outside to the inside when I'm reaching over. So I'm just washing that brush right back out because I got it dipped in the black. And we're going to switch, and we're going to use shading red. Whenever I outline um, any brown tones or flesh tones, I always use shading red. It's just not as uh, stark as black, and black can just kind of make certain colors look really, I don't know, gaudy is the only word I can really come up with. So, uh, thank you, Pam. I'm so excited too. Okay, so there you go. Mary says, uh, we're using the ladybug with a flower. It's so cute, y'all. It's really cute. It's actually a Jackie Watkins template. And so anybody who's wanting that super cute template, go check out Jackie Watkins at uh, Little, oh y'all, mom, what is Jackie Watkins page name? Little Blessings? I think it's Little Blessings Creations. I hope that's right. I don't know, my brain just kind of went and uh, had a brain fart. I can't, I can't seem to recall, but I'm pretty sure it's Little Blessings. She has, some of the cutest stuff. Yeah, so Jackie's the one that came in last week and did uh, the guest painting over the, the, she had like the bee with the flowers that she did in the academy and then she did the uh, lightning bug watermelon slice in the painters club. Uh, but she's got some super, super cute templates. So if anybody's looking for new templates, check her out. Y'all, I'm just taking that shading red at the moment. Make sure I stay in here, stay in my frame. Uh, I'm just taking that shading red and I'm using my script liner. It's a number four Royal Gold script liner. You guys will notice I use a lot of the same brushes every time I paint. Um, there, it's just something that I'm used to. It's something I'm comfortable with. So, you know, well, that's why I use them. Little Blessings Creative Crafts. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Love, love, love Miss Jackie. In fact, I ordered um, a door hanger from her that's supposed to be here today. I just love, love, love her work. But yeah, um, Pam and, and anybody else who's in the Academy, we will post when we're ready for y'all to just swing by and grab your piece, if you would like to base coat it yourself. I do understand we have several members who um, live pretty far, like hour, hour and a half, or even a couple of hours. And so those members, I, I will base coat everything for them. Okay, so, oh, you yeah. I went and just washed out my brush thinking I was done. I'm not, I left my nose. I gotta do my nose. With my shading red, I don't want to switch my colors yet until I obviously finish using that color. I really think I probably have a little bit too much water added in on here because it's almost coming out an opaque. 
kind of color. I'll make it work. Okay, so there is that uh, shading red so far, okay? I think it's just such a good complement. The shading red is such a great complement with your brown tones. I really, really like it. All right, wash that brush out. Let's go ahead and do our beard, and then we'll do black last. Uh, just again, that, that whole thing about me dragging my arm across. I do a really great job of doing that and messing stuff up. All right, I got my navy blue. I still have that same script liner. I'm just getting a little bit of water added into it. Whenever I'm outlining, I like my paint to almost be dripping. Um, for me, I just find that to be easier to make the brush strokes that I want. Um, obviously, you don't have to add all the water that I do, but if you're somebody who struggles uh, when it comes to doing your outlining or your um, your shading, uh, try adding a few drops of water and see if that helps you. All right, I'm just going to turn it. I'm gonna make sure I stay in the frame, y'all, because once I get busy, I kind of forget about that half the time. I see I missed a few little spots on the edge, so I'm just kind of touching that with my brush. Some of my lines, my hand's just kind of shaking a little bit. And anytime I that happens to me, if you're somebody who doesn't have a steady hand like I do, uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's kind of just one of those things. Uh, but that's okay. Just kind of go back over that line a little bit until you can kind of smooth it out. I kind of embrace the um, unsteady hand sometimes, y'all. All right, I'm just gonna take a little bit of that paint off my brush and use what I have left in here to just add some light wisps. I do those right over top of my shading lines. Just kind of accent them. And then you could even like come in if you wanted to and just add some fresh blue lines, you know? Like it's, it doesn't have to be anything perfect or particular. But that is that uh, navy blue that I used to outline on my beard. All right, now let's wash the brush out and we can get the black on here and do a little bit of white and then this guy will be done. I will go over um, the play ball gnome. I know I did not do that on a live. I did that beforehand because y'all, if I'm trying to paint three gnomes on a live, that's a lot. But obviously if I'm using all the same colors, I didn't feel like you guys needed to see every single one. But I, remind me if I don't, if I end up trying to forget, I, I will go over um, how I did that just so you guys can know. And obviously if you have any questions about it, you can let me know and I'm happy to answer. All right, so I'm just grabbing that black. Y'all, these polka dots, whoopsie, dripped a bunch of black on there. Uh, these polka dots I have done before where I outline them. I've also done it where I don't outline them. It's really a personal preference. You don't have to outline them if you don't want to. Um, but I actually used to do these um, hats with white polka dots and I didn't outline them when I did it with white. But then this year I was like, man, I think I, think I want to try to get a little bit more color. So I ended up doing orange. And I felt like with the orange polka dot, it looked better with an outline. It's really a personal preference, you know, and if you're doing it, especially if you're doing a different color scheme, you know, to represent a different baseball team, it's going to be one of those things. Just kind of play with it and see what you think looks better.
think I might even have a little too much water added in here because it's almost see-through in a few places. Oh well. Well, I'm just keep on working with it. And come back and just do a little bit around that circle. Same thing over here. And one more. that brush down because I'm scared I'm going to get it everywhere. Turn it and just finish out my pants and my shoes with my black. No, I think I just need to add just a touch more paint. It's just really, really thin. Really, I think I just have too much, way too much water. Yeah, that's a little bit better. All right. I'm just kind of come over and just whoop, add a little, a couple of swish lines. I really, those lines that I kind of make, the little kind of uh, shading lines or swish lines, I don't really know what to call them. Whenever I'm coming back and I'm using my uh, outline color, I'm almost going just right back over top of that shading line. All right. Okay, outline is done. Let me cap this and show you guys. Obviously, those of you that have been watching us for a while, y'all know I'm not done until I highlight it. But I am done with the actual outlining part of it. So there we go. Only thing I got left is I need to add a little bit of highlight. So clean out that brush and switch over and get my white. Now, when I am doing white highlights, y'all, I want that paint to be almost watery. That's just how I like to do um, my highlights. I definitely like it to be really watered down. So I'm just going to kind of come in over here and throw a few little oops on my polka dots. Oh, get over here. Don't not the best view. And now I'm going to just take that brush, what's left in that brush. I'm not adding more paint and just kind of come in and do a few light strokes. Now on my nose, I will do just right down the center. On my back, I'm gonna just take, do one stroke. Leave it at that on that back. That back has all that um, dry brushing. I don't wanna cover that up, y'all. I don't wanna take away from that. So I just really, Stick with one on the end of the back because I just think that looks a little bit better and then I'll also do one here on the handle at the base and keep it like that my hands I kind of do one towards the base obviously my beard is already white so I don't add anything else to that just a little bit over here I'm trying to remember how to I think I did it like this I think he's done. All right, yeah, looking good. Let me show you guys my end result. There you go. Obviously this is asterisk colors. You don't have to do asterisk colors. You could do any colors you wanna do. It's a blank that comes, you know, unpainted. So um, for me, I did all three gnomes, all three baseball gnomes, two coats of white as a base. I used um, asterisk orange, brilliant blue, uh, and flesh on all three gnomes. The only difference with the baseball bat gnome and my other two is I have a bat, so I used reindeer brown as a base. I did uh, dry brushing with shading brown and camel. On outline, or uh, excuse me, uh, my beard is shaded with uh, beard blue. My brilliant blue is shaded with navy blue. My asterisk orange is shaded with shading orange. Now on outline, my beard and my beard blue, I outline with navy blue. On my brown tones and my flesh tones, I outline with shading red. And all other colors, I outlined with black. So there is your baseball note. Now y'all, same color concept on this one. Same exact thing, two coats of white, you know, asterisk orange, brilliant blue, flesh tone, all that, same exact thing. 
But I did want to point out to you guys on your stripes, um, if you are going to do this one, shade the bottom of your stripe. Notice my shading is at the bottom here. Bottom, 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 bottom. The reason I did that is because if you did the top, by the time you come up to this, this stripe that's kind of coming off the top, your, your line's gonna end up curved when all the rest of your lines are straight and it does not look good. I've done it and guess what? I had to repaint them because it did not look good. So if you're doing this pattern with the stripes, do one shading stripe at the base of each line, okay? Uh, that's the only thing I really wanted to be able to tell you guys about the stripe. Now, y'all already have poly on it, so you see it's, it's really shiny. Uh, but yeah, I just did a little bit of shading on the base of the stripe, on the bottom of the stripe, and just left it at that. It doesn't take a whole lot. But other than that, obviously, same colors used. So you got your play ball. You've got your uh, baseball bat. I've got paint all over me. I'm just getting it everywhere. And those of you that weren't here at the beginning, I just wanted to show you the uh, baseball. No, I think that one's, it's dry enough. I can stand it now. Uh, but that gets you a look. Let me just stand this one up for a few minutes so you guys can look at them all next to each other. That gives you the uh, kind of finished and uh, completed look for a set that all matches. I love these guys together. I love sets of things, especially things that have coordinating colors. I just love to do that. Uh, so obviously all Astros colors, but guys, y'all can paint them any color you want. So let me pick this one back up before I forget y'all, because if I leave that standing up, that paint is gonna drip everywhere. Actually, I'm gonna leave it right here because I got Christmas stuff on my tables right now. But thank y'all so much for hanging out. Thank you, Debbie. Debbie says those look great. Thank you, thank you. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. Thank y'all for uh, migrating over here to our new page. Um, you guys can expect to see us coming out a heck of a lot more on this page. So I hope that you guys will like it, share it, you know, help us kind of get the word out that this is going to be our new platform for our lives. But I appreciate you guys being with me today. After these dry, I will get a photo and I'll get it posted in the comment section underneath this video. And until next time, you guys all enjoy your weekend. I hope y'all uh, have fun outside. It's been some beautiful weather. Um, I am going to be working on patterns this weekend. Super excited. We got new stuff coming out. I'm just, oh, I'm so ready. So I'm also attempting to get all of the new April patterns painted before our sneak peek. So y'all wish me luck. I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Y'all enjoy your weekend. I will see you guys next time. Bye everybody.